Hello, and welcome to Magic is Real, a podcast focused on the fascinating world of near-death experiences, spirit communication, and all things metaphysical and spiritual. The mission of this project is to share messages of hope and inspiration with others, and to spread the word that death is only an illusion. Thank you for being here with an open heart and mind. I wish you peace, light, and love always. Hello, Magic Israel family. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm Shannon Torrance. I'm your host. I'm a medium, and I am fascinated with all things metaphysical and spiritual. Today, I have with me Elaine Thorpe. Elaine came to my attention, was highly recommended to me as a trance medium. She is a spiritual artist, and she's here to talk about her journey, how she came into this work, what channeling is. She communicates when she does her readings through a spirit, or through her spirit guide, Jonathan Hunter. And it's amazing to see how she changes when Jonathan comes in. Um, if he comes in organically, great. If he doesn't, that's okay. I will, I will include a sample for you so you can see what this work is all about. She also channels other guides. And um, so I, she has a really interesting way of working and we're here today to talk about it. So Elaine, thank you so much for agreeing to participate today. I'm so happy to have you here. Well, thank you for having me on your channel, you know, and I, I wish you every success. Um, it's very nicely done, you know, it's really nice and clear, so I'm happy to join you. And thanks for having me on. Such a pleasure. So, Elaine, I'd love to start by getting to know more about you. I know that your father was a physical medium, and I know what that is, but a lot of viewers may not and listeners. So, Start wherever you like. I'd love to hear about your childhood and your exposure to this type of work and what your spiritual beliefs may have been and as much about your father as you'd like to share. Yeah, um, you know, I was away from my father for, for a number of years because I was um, I was in, in care for a while. And then I, I came out of that when he discovered um, where I was. And I went to live with a, a foster mother who he was dwelling with. And he took care of me and um, she took care of me. It was lovely. Um, I'd found a home at last, you know, and I'm back with my father. And I'd always um, felt a bit of something missing in my life, you know. So when I came there, he, I discovered that he was a physical medium. Now, I didn't know anything about it. And he, he did it for over 30 years, right up until about 1998. Um, when he grew a bit unwell so he couldn't do it anymore and he started and I, I was only 15 so my uh my mother invited me to the circle and we uh he used to black everything out in those days and it was all genuine he didn't run around the room doing anything fake you know he only actually ever did it for my mother because he he wasn't that worried about it he did it for her because it, it made her happy you know and he had developed with a, a lady called Nellie Knight he'd sat in her circle and he started off with the trance and then that worked its way up and started to become physical mediumship and things started happening around him so they went into their their own circle and they used to record all the sessions so I got I got an invite one evening and this was about a year after my brother Peter died um he was only young and so I I sat with the others you know we had to leave our handbags and things in the other room our coats and belongings we weren't allowed anything in there you know <laughs> and in of course in those days in the 1980s we didn't have mobile phones so we we didn't have any telephones to leave in there we just left all our stuff and we, we got explained the rules that not to touch the uh the trumpet so the trumpet is something where you have um, like a cone shaped thing in the middle of the room and it has luminous paint at the top and at the bottom and it's so you can see it moving around in the dark you see um, because a lot of mediums physical mediums in those days would sit in the dark um, so I thought well I'll sit here and we did the prayers and we started and the music was turned on and everybody had to start singing well, I didn't know the, the songs, they're old London songs, so I just hummed along to them until I began to know a few of the words and kind of 
we all had to sing properly and think positive thoughts and think of the light and everything. And I thought, wow, this is amazing. I feel a bit freaky, but, you know, I'm, I was only a kid, so I, I didn't really know much about it. But I felt kind of comfortable because everyone else was there and I felt quite safe. Well, my uh, father had gone into the trance and once he went into that trance, he didn't know anything. He didn't hear anything what was going on in the room. He would go into a very deep trance and he would get out of his consciousness and he would go off on a journey of his own, you know. And when he came back, he, he didn't know what had gone on. So all the sessions were recorded. So that anyway, the trumpet was moving around the room and the toys were moving around. And all of a sudden, at great speed, the trumpet whipped over to me. And I thought, well, I'm not allowed to touch it because I'll, I'll damage dad, you know, and I didn't want to do it. So I, I followed the rules, you know. And all of a sudden, something came into my mind. I thought, well, I'll ask if it's my brother. So I said, is that you, Peter? And it nodded, yes. I thought, oh, my God. So I thought, oh, that's got to be someone on the end of that trumpet. And I thought, well, if there's someone on the end of that trumpet, if there's a human hand holding it, then the luminous paint's going to be covered up by the human hand because it will block out the light of the luminous paint. Well, it hadn't. There was no hand on there. There was no, there was no hand covering any luminous paint. The whole end that would have been held by a human hand if it was, was clear. The, the light, the luminous light on the end of the trumpet was absolutely clear. And so I, all I could see was kind of an ethereal mist behind it. And I thought, my God, there's no one holding it. It's in midair. And I was absolutely, you know, first a little bit freaked out. And as soon as I said, well, is that you, Peter? It stroked my leg. And I just burst into tears because it was only about a year earlier that I'd lost him. And he was only 19, you know, he was very young. And then all of a sudden, just as I said that, it whipped over in the other direction as fast as anything and just start carrying on. And, and it would move to the song, singing in rhythm and play and move about and the toys. It was all absolutely genuine, I can tell you now. And it was amazing. And I sat with him a few times after that. And he, they would have Christmas circles. Well, anyway, the, the other circle, um, went on at my mum's friend Doreen and she would open her front room and she had quite a big front room and I know her son also named Jonathan actually funnily enough he said that one night we were sitting there with your father and, and some chocolate smarties rained down from the ceiling and I thought well no one would have thrown a load of smarties up in the air and come down it was all genuine because they came from all directions and if you threw them up in the air, you'd have to throw several handfuls at arm's length for them to get all right. He said they just rained down from the ceiling and things were flying around the room, all sorts of things. It was so, so powerful. You know? And sometimes they would sit for a couple of weeks, they wouldn't get anything. And then another time they'd sit and they'd get everything. So that's what it was. We, we'd sit in the Christmas circles and we'd put toys out. So one night we did a circle for our 16th birthday. I've got a twin in heaven and she was an identical twin. So we, we asked her what sort of cake she would like. And she said, well, as, I'm, as we're 16, we want a 16 layer cake. So I, I, they baked about um, eight sponges and cut them in half because otherwise 16 whole cakes would have just toppled over. Well, they, they covered it in melted chocolate and put a ribbon round it, looked lovely, and wished us happy birthday. Put it in the middle of the circle with a kind of a spatula thing in there. And we wished happy birthday, and we put a card in a sealed envelope. The card was taken out of the sealed envelope, and the envelope was still sealed. And it hadn't been touched, but yet the card was outside the envelope. And the, the cake, normally if you cut a chocolate cake, it cracks, doesn't it? The chocolate cracks. There wasn't one crack in the chocolate. It cut through the cake, no cracks at side, just a straight line, no cracks in the chocolate whatsoever. And normally if you're gonna cut um, cake like that, you'd have to heat up the knife, you'd heat it up and then cut into the chocolate, avoid it crack. Well, there was nowhere to heat the knife, so they just cut it in. 
That was crazy. Crazy stuff went on there. My dad levitated in one in church circles that he did. He sat for over 200 people in Iceland and still the toys flew around the room, still the trumpet in the lights, kind of a red light that he sat in. So there was no forgery or anything. It was amazing. And that was my father's journey, you know, and that went on for a few years on and off. He traveled to places and, and do um, some demonstrations, you know. So you know, years later, it, it all kind of stopped. And um, around about 2005 came my turn. Um, I went on holiday to Ireland and I know that my father-in-law had passed um, back in 1995. Uh, of course, um, previous to that, uh, anything starting, I used to photograph on my phone orbs. And I was always interested in it. So I used to get my phone and I used to photograph near there and these orbs would appear. And my daughter sat there once, uh, she must have been about six years old. And I, I said, let's take a photo and uh, wish the spirits and all of us happy Christmas. And when it came out, she had a massive white orb. It was really bright by her head. I thought, oh, that's a huge, and all sorts of orb photos. Well, you know, eventually I, uh, we went to Ireland and I, we stayed in a hotel. It was the last night there. And the kids were only young then. I think my son was about 15 and my daughter was several years younger. She was about seven, eight years old, I think. And they were in one double bed and we were in the other in the hotel in Ireland. And I just thought, oh, I'd love for my father-in-law to make himself known. So I said, could you make yourself known? It's our last night here. Um, I'd love to hear from you, do anything, you know? Kids have gone to sleep. And I thought, oh, nothing's gonna happen. So I, I uh, laid there quietly and uh, I don't think their father had quite gone to sleep. Um, he must have been, you know, aware enough to, we just laid down and started to go to sleep. So I, I rolled over, laid on my stomach and before I knew it, I was just relaxed and I didn't take much notice of anything else. And my stomach pulled in. I thought, oh God, you know, it just happened all so fast. I had no control over it. And it was uh, apparently woke the kids up. It was really loud and they couldn't understand what was being said because it was loud and it startled them, you know. And I know what they said. They said, son, I tried to love you. And it seemed like a quiet whisper to me. I tried to love you, I tried to love you or something. And that was it, it stopped. And so the next day, you know, I, I know that the baby had been crying downstairs. I thought, oh dear, we've woken the, the owners of the hotel up. I, how am I gonna face them in the morning? <laughs> oh, I'll probably just tell them I was talking in my sleep, you know? So um, the next day before we left, I phoned up a lady named Jean Kent. And she was, unbeknown to me, she used to sit with my father and from time to time, and she was a trans medium and she used to hold a group. Well, that was the only person I possibly knew that my parents knew that I could ring. So I rang her and she said, well, it's trans mediumship. I said, well, what's trans mediumship? And she said, well, it's um, a bit like what your father does, but he's physical. And um, I said, well, how can I, take you further you know she said well I know a lady named Kay Austin and she does uh, trans development so I went to her group I, I started a few weeks later well anyway when I got first got there there was a different lady there and I, so she uh, showed us how to meditate and I didn't like it I felt a bit uncomfortable with it I thought oh I'll, I'll just wait till the other lady comes back I'll sit with her well, as soon as I sat with her, you know, I felt comfortable and she kind of experimented and did all the prayers and everything. And uh, I was really enjoying it, you know. Well, by that time, my guide hadn't yet showed up. So I, I continued going for the weeks and I was enjoying it and getting to know the other sitters and 
some of them were speaking. There was only like a, well, it must have been about five or six of us in there, including the teacher, you know, in a little, uh, in a little converted garage. And it was comfortable in there and she dimly lit with candles and stuff. And um, a few months after that, my, my neighbour, who used to live next door, she called me round and her friends left and she said, oh, you, I, you're doing your trance mediumship. I said, well, I've only been doing it for a few months. Oh, she said, can you show it me? I'm really interested. I said, oh, I'm not sure. She said, well, all my friends go. I said, well, come on then. I said, you'll have to call me back in a few minutes. I said, because uh, I'm not really used to it yet. So I did a prayer and I started. And I can't remember who came through first. I have no idea. I still to this day cannot remember what happened. But all I remember is at the last, my guy, Jonathan, showed his face. And not literally, but he said, I am Jonathan, the lame spirit guy. And I thought, oh, my whole being just lit up. My body sparkled. I, I, I don't know how much I felt love, but I never felt love like that. And it just lit up my whole being. I, I, I'd never experienced it in my life, that much love. It wasn't like an earthly love. It was, uh, you could tell it wasn't of this earth, you know. <clears throat> so uh, after that, I thought, wow, where have you been all my life? I know you, but I don't know you. But where have you been? And so after that, uh, I started you know, continuing to sit in the group and he would start to speak. And at first he was a little bit unexpressive with the voice, you know, it, it, um, it wasn't uh, nasty or anything like that, but he was learning. So he had to learn how to, to blend properly with my energy and, and to get me to trust. And for a while he spoke like that, you know, like a, I've got recordings of it from 2006. And I started around then, 2005, 2006. And I've, I look back to the recordings and many, many recordings were taken um, until eventually I left that group and I started up my own group at a friend's house. And we would sit once a week on a Monday and we managed to gather friends and friends came, friends went and a, a new lady joined with my mother's old friend Doreen and she ended up taking over the circle because Doreen couldn't um, do it anymore. You know, she just just sit at the side. And we didn't get any uh, physical, but we enjoyed it. You know, the energy was there and the trance continued. And we just used to sit for my development every week. And, and it was no, you know, there was no jealousy or anything there or competition. It was wonderful. We're all a group of um, mediums and sometimes we'd allow visitors in. And that went on for about six years um, until we continued it at my, the, the lady's house that ran it. And we continued on right until the, the 2020 lockdown came and then it kind of diminished and uh, haven't been back since. But during that time, um, although we used to sit, I then joined like a, a telephone line and I used to do the trance on there for people to come on and some sort of believed in, some were a bit dubious about it. And then I left there after a while. I thought, well, this isn't for me, you know. Um, I'll leave it to the, the psychics and that and the, the mediums to do their bit. This obviously isn't for me. So my, you know, my guy would talk to me quite a lot. And he would say, well, we have to further the journey now. We have to go out there. I said, oh, I'm not sure. And he said to me, well, you'll be all right because we'll, we'll take care of you. And I said, you will, won't you? I said, because I'm a bit nervous. People are going to think I'm in some sort of, uh, you know, nutcase or something going out there. And of course, the live started, didn't they, on Facebook. And I, he said, well, you've got that now. Come on, we're going to go ahead. And I said, uh, Oh, I'm not sure. He said, well, you've got to go for it now. It's now or never. I said, well, okay, I'll do it this once and see what happens. So I did it once and I did it twice and I did it three times. The third time, it just went a bit manic. 
And so people all started uh, in the end asking me to come to do demos for them at their, their places. And they took me there and brought me home. It was amazing. And, and it's just grown from there, really. I ended up doing uh, private readings and, and at my house. And then we decided to, to go further. And a friend helped us create a website and everything and do everything properly. And, and then my family kind of took over because my friend didn't have a lot of time. He had his own family to deal with. And it just grew and grew. Um, and here I am. There's a lot of in-betweens in that, of course, with life and, you know, a lot of stopping and starting and all, all sorts of things on my journey. But it's mostly been about uh, Facebook. I've just, I just sort of stuck to that. And then we okay. started taking it out to other channels. Um, we've just recently taken it out to TikTok um, just yesterday. Um, one new video we added on there. And that seems to have gone a bit mad. So I've uh, I've never experienced it before going doing that. Never. Um, I'm quite a shy person. Yeah. Um, and going public for me was quite hard, especially when I first started because I worried about judgment. You know. Um, I still do get nervous about it. Yeah, let me ask you that. When you do readings, do you get nervous beforehand or do you just completely give it over to Jonathan and whoever else wants to come in? I, especially if demos get a bit nervous because there's a lot of people like looking at me and I'm expected of, you know, and because I'm a shy person, I think, oh, just hurry up and go into the trance and just, I could just shut my eyes and go in. But yeah, I do, I do get nervous about it because I want the best for them. Yeah. I want everyone to have the best. Now, I know we can't all tune into everybody, can we? There's there's going to be the odd one that isn't so easy to tune into. It's not our fault. It's just that it 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 doesn't work out. Perhaps either it's not meant to be, or uh, you know, even the best of us have ones that we can't tune into. Yeah, I find that too. It's only happened, I would say, ninety percent of the time. I can connect and it's that it might not, it might even be a little more, but there's always every reading I go in feeling nervous. What if I can't connect? What if they think I'm a sham because I can't do it? Or what if, it, you know, I get it all wrong and I just keep getting no's and how do I get out of this gracefully? And then spirit pretty much always comes through unless there's some circumstance that I, and I've now become so much more confident because I have found that the times that it doesn't work, there's later on, it always turns out that there was a very specific reason why. And it all made sense later. I doubted myself, but then I had another friend try to do it with me. Clayton, actually, who's somebody that referred you to me uh, is another wonderful medium. And we, I had someone that I just could not <laughs> read. And I thought, what? Why is it because I kind of know her and I'm nervous because I want her to, I, I'm nervous because she knows a lot of people I know. And what if I can't do it? And then I said, listen, for whatever reason, I'm not entirely connecting. I had a little bit of a connection, but it wasn't quite strong. And so I said, I'm going to give you another reading, but with my friend, who's also a medium, we'll give it to you together. He had the same troubles and oh. um, it was, he, and he's usually so spot on and um, it, it really kind of turned out that she was sort of believes, but was very resistant to certain aspects of what we were trying to tell her. And she was going, nope, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. And she was shutting it down. And then I said, okay, so it wasn't just me. And so there are reasons that that happens, but there's always that fear of going in on, because every single reading you're unprepared. We don't know what's going to happen until we get there. And there's always that feeling of, I have no idea what's about to happen. Am I going to fall flat on my face? Am I going to nail it? Is this going to be moving? Is it going to be tough? You don't know. And you just have to go in there with total trust, which is why I got trust tattooed on my wrist to remind myself oh, nice. just to let, I just got that because I was <clears> like, <throat> every time I go into a reading, I feel like anxious about it. I'm always like, oh my God, please let this hat work. And then I always look at my wrist and say, surrender just let it go and I yeah. think that that's really common it makes me feel better to know that you feel that way so what I'd love to talk about is the kind of I'm an evidential medium 
So my job is to bring through evidence that your loved one is still here. Your job is similar, and yet you're actually channeling in a different, I mean, you could call what I do channeling, but it's not the same. Trans mediumship, I'd love to know sort of how it works from your understanding of how it works and what is happening to you, Elaine, as you're channeling Jonathan, for example. Well, when, when I go into the trance, I usually have music because when I joined Kay's group, she automatically turned music for us to go into the trance with. And everybody got used to that, accustomed to it. And, and I expect they all, they all use music to go into trance now, perhaps if they're still doing it. But she brought us up on music. And I've always been quite a musical person anyway. So, I've, you know, music to me is just uh, second to none. I wake up in the morning, headphones on, music in with a cup of tea. That, that's just my start to the day, every day. And all through the day, I'm just such a musical person. So I turn the music on and, and you know, suitable music to help me relax. And that helps me. So even if you're doing like a clairvoyant reading, put music in your ears beforehand. For the I do that. I do that too. And it just totally tunes you in. It's good that you do. And I, I turn that on. And as, as, as that passes, I, I move myself further into the trance and I try not to force anything. Sometimes the nerves still come through in the trance though. It still comes through and I think, oh, go back, go back, you know, just nerves leave me. Come on spirit, help me to relax a little bit more. And sometimes I, you know, totally relaxed. And sometimes if I've entered the reading into a slightly stressed with something's going on, I, I, I ask God to relax me. I say, oh, please, can you please calm me down and let me enter into the reading so I can relax and give them the best, you know? I sort of change my words in a prayer a little bit every now and again, just to say, you know, without going on too long and explaining what I want to happen. And it seems to work that way. Um, and, and I enter in with that music, then he'll come in. And I, I feel like I'm sandwiched in the middle. I feel he's at the back of me, at the front of me kind of all round and I, I see things, I see pictures, sometimes moving pictures, sometimes still pictures of places, places with light. I, I get that when I'm coming back as well. Um, sometimes if there's been a soul that hasn't been able to show up in the trance, they show up in my mind on the way back and they ask me to say it to them. So I, I tell them, it doesn't happen every time, but I tell them, Oh, I just got this in my mind. They said, well, that's connected to so-and-so in my family. And I, and I thought, wow, that's, that's incredible because they couldn't get through in the trance. I thought, well, why couldn't they get through in the trance then? They, so there must be some of the souls find it easier to get through in the trance and others don't. So they wait till you wait, come round and, and give you the information then, you know, or just as you're coming around. So that has happened a few times. But the way I feel is wonderful um, if I relax properly, especially when the healing takes place. If he does healing on people, sometimes I'm a spectator and he lets me see what's happening with them. And he takes me to the place where he takes them. And I get to see it. That, For instance, um, I had one woman, two people come in for their healing at some demos. I was doing a weekend demo in Essex few years ago and this woman come in and he said well you'd like some healing like I took her hands with my hands and when she went into her healing I wasn't expecting to see anything but I I ended up spectating so I found myself um found myself up in these clouds with Jonathan it was so real so clear and the lady was to the left of me that was having the healing done. I thought, oh, she's here. Then as I looked to the right, a man, an older man with a suit came in and he was walking through the crowd and he put his arms out to his daughter. She ran to him and I just watched. I just thought, oh, that's lovely. Dad, Dad, she went, I miss you so much. He had, you know, the old man's with the glasses and everything in the suit. And he, then her father put his arm across 
And as I looked over, there were all clouds. There was a massive swirling cloud going in a slow motion. It was so big, a whole load of clouds just swirling in a slow motion, circular movement. I thought, wow, that must be the entrance to heaven then. And Jonathan said, we have to go now. I thought, damn, I didn't want to come back. Yeah, that was amazing. And then the, the, in the afternoon, the second woman came in. And she sat there, she was an Irish woman. And he said, would you like some healing? And she, he said, well, you know, there's no, it's all free where I take you here. So the next minute I knew, I, I was, uh, he took her to have the healing. And I found myself in like this room, it looks all marble. It was all made of marble. It had all marble pillars, you know, the big tall pillars. And in the center, it had a like a shallow pool. It was a very large pool. And it, it didn't have that much water in it, but enough to lay in. And it had uh, very, very um, narrow little steps leading all around the edge of the pool that would lead into the pool. And I could see a woman in the corner. She had like a long white robe on and she had uh, leaves around her head. She looked a bit like Julius Caesar and female, but she had a pot on her head. And she just walked past, you know, oblivious to me being there. She didn't know I was there. And I think there's more than one, but I couldn't see over that side here. I could just see kind of to the left and in front. And she had a plant behind her, kind of a yucca plant there. And as I looked out, I, there was like a, a hole in front of the pool. There was like a whole open plan window, but there was no glass. And there was nothing outside but clouds. And they were all kind of floating into the marble room. I thought, God, I'm in, fuck, I'm in heaven here. Yeah, this, I, both times I come out crying. And when you were there, Obviously, you're speaking to your clients. Do you have a lot of mediums tell me they don't even remember their readings because they were in this deep state and they're like, I don't even know what I said. I just channeled. I don't that doesn't happen to me. I remember everything. Um, and I even remember the most memorable ones for a long time. Do you when you're in a trance? Are you conscious of what's happening? Or are you sort of somewhere else, like you said, in this heaven place or somewhere else? Um, when the reading's going on, I can hear him. I, yeah. I can hear him talking. And it's like sometimes when I come round, I've missed bits. It's like bits are wiped out and some bits you remember. So sometimes bits are completely gone and the person might mention it. And you think, oh, well, I didn't know that. I totally didn't realise it was even said. Yes. Yet you can hear it while you're in the trance. When you come round, it's gone. But it's um, most of the time, you know, I can hear him speaking. I can hear him speaking. There was only once where um, it happened at Kay's and it was, it was really weird because I don't remember going there and I don't remember coming back. I don't remember it when I got back until a couple of hours later. So I, I was in the room and, and my guy was talking and next minute we knew I must have gone, um, but I didn't realize I had gone. And so I, I see what looked like Jesus. And again, in the clouds, everything was softened down slightly to the left at quite a distance, enough that I could, it was really strange because although he was at a distance, it was like my eyes could automatically zoom in close to him yet be at a distance. And I see him there and he looked to the right, looked straight at me, he didn't say anything or have any emotion on his face, anything. And so I could zoom in and I saw his hands and I saw the robe and it looked kind of a, a toned down softness of the robe that was kind of a, a white color, but not glowing white, kind of just softened white. And it was covering his hands. I thought that looks a bit big on him, but yet it fits perfectly. And I couldn't see his feet because they were hidden in the clouds. And that was it. I must have shot back into my body, not remembered it for a while. And the house vibrated, the whole house. We don't really get earthquakes here. But very seldom, or very small if they're going to be any and God knows how many years apart. But the whole house shook. 
it, it vibrated. And then apart from the little room we were sitting in, all the doors flew open and the lights went on in the house. Well, there was nobody else in the house, so Kay just got up, she said, what the heck was that? I'll just leave the circle for a minute, spirit. Um, I'm just gonna check the house. The two little dogs were going mad in her front room and the rest of the house was all lit up. Every room in the house, I think, was lit up. It was quite a fairly big house, you know? And she said, well, all the lights were on. I had to go around switching on and all the doors had flown open. I thought, well, that's, when I looked back at it, I realized that the power of what I'd just seen left that place. And I thought, well, <laughs> I realize it now, what had caused it. Right. I actually have a question about that sort of thing. I mean, you can continue if you if you had more, but I had a question about yeah. the, phys the physical, not just physical mediumship, but the act, the ability to be able to see these things happening. For example, the trumpet you mentioned, right? Um, you know, for me, I receive information, just it's all in my, it's in my soul, but it's in my mind, right? It's it, for lack of a better term. And how does physical, how does the physical manifestation of spirit happen? And like, for example, your father, was it something he did to summon this kind of energy or power? Is it just his, his energy? Do you even know how he discovered it himself? Yeah. I mean, he, um, what it was is they, my mum and dad, they went to a spiritual church. Somehow they got invited to along to it. As far as I can remember, as my mother told me. Um, my dad wasn't really interested in it before. He just went along, you know, just for mum, because he'd do everything for her. And they went along. And of course, that's where they met Nellie Nye. And she invited them to the circle. And my dad just went along to please mum. Well, he ended up going into trance and ended up a physical medium, because Nellie was a physical medium, you know. It was a kind of rubbed off on him. And he'd sit for quite a while. And I, I never got to meet Nellie and Charlie, her, her husband, because I think they passed away before I came along, you know. He'd been sitting with them for quite a while. I don't know how many years, but they they met people like Doris Stokes. Um, I think they, they met Gordon Higginson. I think they met Les, Leslie Flint. All those old school mediums they met. Dad was in the psychic news and everything. Um, but he used to tell me that he'd get out of his body. And he said once, he said he he started to go in and out. You know, he'd get in his body, get out, get back in again, get out till he eventually got out. And he made me laugh because he said he looked at himself and said, who's that ugly bugger there? Oh, I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> but he said he went to the Great Wall of China. Ah, I said, wonderful. Wow, Dad, how do you do that? That's crazy. He said, well... I said, how do you go into that uh, deep trance anyway? And he said, oh, I just think of a nice garden. I just relax and trust and think of a nice garden or something, a nice place to go in, and off I go. And he gets out, he, he just leave his body, got willy-nilly. They just, um, they put two musics on for him, you know, an Irish country singer and another one, Enya. Mm. Should they put those two on, he'd be gone. Enya's a mood, I will say that. <laughs> Enya puts yeah. you in a mood much she cheaper, does, yeah. much cheaper than airfare. So I mean, this is something oh, yeah. that really interests me. Can we just go to Tahiti today? Uh that sounds yeah. really awesome. And then uh yeah, when does the physical stuff follow? Is it something you set, not you, but he or whoever does this kind of work? Do you set the intention for physical things around you to to move or I think he just leaves his body and the spirit guide, his spirit guide was called Zambuli. He was a Matabili warrior, apparently. Um, and I think he was impaled for sleeping with the chief's wives or something. But what it was is he used to come through uh, and sometimes spirit would just come and talk. There wasn't always the physical, but yeah. quite a lot of the time I sat, there was. And he just used to let go and trust and it would all start happening. When we sang the songs, we'd build up the energy. And that's when it would start happening, you know? Right. Sometimes we'd be singing for about 10, 15 minutes and nothing would happen. All of a sudden, warmth, the trumpet would go up in the air and we'd think, oh, they're here. Right. And it's they'd all... play the drums. Yeah. yeah. We had a, 
one called De Broy or something, he was a French drummer in life, he told us. They used to spell out the words with the trumpet in midair, and my mum would, and Dorian would just to figure them out, what they're saying, um, because there didn't seem to be any direct voice, although there was on recordings that they played back. Because I think one year, mum said, oh, that was a cheat, they didn't wish us a happy new year, did they? <laughs> and then when she played the tape back, someone whispered happy new year on it. Ah, uh, cool. I've heard some I've heard some amazing EVPs myself um and I know that that's well I'll tell you so there's this I've talked about it on the podcast there's this civil war museum here that I'm involved with just because I've gotten to know the owners and it's one of the most haunted places in the nation and so I had an interest in it and they know I'm a medium so I've gone down there and spent some time there well there is a little girl spirit in that Civil War Museum, and her name is Emma, and my friend who works there has sent me these EVPs of her, and <clears throat> everyone's talking, and you hear clear as day a little girl mm -hmm. singing, speaking, saying hi, and I've heard numerous recordings of her, and I get chills because she's so cute, um, and she's not in the room, but when you put a recorder on, you can hear her like it sounds... If I didn't know these people, I'd be like, you, come on, that was your child. It doesn't sound like a spirit. It sounds like an actual person in the room. And That's it is amazing. so fascinating. It's so amazing. And you and it's funny because she's from the Civil War, I assume, we assume. But it's wow. like she sounds just like any other kid. She sings a song or she'll say, hi, or she'll, she just is very Aww. friendly. Or it doesn't, it's funny, you think they would sound different being from a different time. She just yes. sounds like any little four or five year old. She's so cute. And it's yes. just amazing that that stuff can be captured. And when you listen back, you'll hear it. It's often a whisper. You can hear it through technology sometimes if you have a camera in your house. Uh, a friend of mine caught an EVP by accident, uh, which she's played for me. Uh, she, and her, fr her best friend had just died. And my friend was crying and pacing. And she asked a question of, in her head of spirit. Yes. And she got a response and she sent it. She's like, oh my God. And she's like, oh. what is that? And I've listened to it over and over. I'm like, yep, that's a, that is a voice. That is a voice coming through your, you can see the security camera. You can see my friend walking back and forth and crying. And then oh. all of a sudden you hear this voice saying it could be. And it was a response to the question she asked. And it was really, it's exciting. I, I, I'm really interested in it that whole so phenomenon. Hard. I did that years ago. I, I put a tape recorder on in my room before I started all the trance. Yeah. Put it on. I said, uh, I'm going to go out now. No one in the house. So it's one of those uh, old fashioned tape recorders you put cassette in. Oh, yes. And I asked so God to protect the house. So I went out. I took my daughter out. She was only a baby then. And I come back. I turned the tape on. Well, what I heard was, you know, like it's like somebody turned the tape on again over the top of what I just done, and then they span it round at full speed, so it's like somebody speaking, but they'd sped it up, and then at the end it went ah like that. Yeah, that's so weird. And I turned it over, and a few months later I did it again. I said, "Well, please protect the house." Well, anyway, um, I used to call my daughter Louise when she was little because she's Louise, and I called her, Louise, Louise. Well, anyway, I left the tape on, and it was all quiet. There was just white noise on there. All of a sudden, I heard toys being played with, my daughter's toys, and then she went, Louise, boy, Louise, boy. Then obviously, she's a girl, but she was uh, like, she knew she was going to be a bit of a tomboy when she was little. And she, she said that, and then it, all of a sudden, it went quiet. I thought, wow, that's my twin. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's and she so visited my daughter. My daughter used to see her physically in the house. Oh, yeah. and that's she, beautiful. And she, my son saw her. I never saw her. But she she showed herself to my daughter several times when she was little. Hmm. That's amazing. Now, yeah. does Jonathan come to you at all times? Or is it just when you do readings? Does he communicate with you and other guides, I I assume? Yes. Yeah, he, he does. He, uh, he talks to me in my mind and... You know, sometimes he feels quite close at times. I mean, I've been sitting there and I've felt heaviness in my throat here, mm -hmm. kind of the base of my throat. And I said, no, you can't talk now. But, 
you know, not when I'm out doing the shopping or anything, does not Right. Do but if I ask him to be with me, if I feel a bit apprehensive or nervous when I'm going out somewhere, I'll just say, oh, Jonathan, can you be with me? Yeah. And immediately as I say to my head, uh, I'm right here with you. It's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, if I want anything, I can talk to my dad. He answers me straight away. And I think, hmm, is it just wishful thinking or is it just yeah. me? And you send me a sign. They, and they send you signs. Thank send me you. signs all the time. Right. So much stuff has you know, happened, you know. Weird stuff. Yeah. I mean, I've sat there nodding off from an afternoon in, in the other room there. And I get like an electrical crackle in my ears. And all of a sudden I find myself in here. And then when I woke up in there, I thought, how did I get in here? What am I doing in the front room? I, I thought I was in the other room. And it's all, all confusing. Then one time, I know that Jonathan was there because I kind of, you know, you get that afternoon slump. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I'll just sit here for a minute. And I kind of nodding like that. I wasn't asleep. I wasn't, you know, I was awake enough to hear. But all of a sudden, it was like I was somewhere else. For one split second, I could hear the clopping of horses' hooves on cobbled ground, and I could see the wheels and this half of this huge carriage. I thought, what the heck was that? Well, <laughs> really amazing stuff. And then I have seen him in a dream as well. I've seen him so clearly. He was just literally standing next to me. I've, I've seen Robin Williams, no word of a lie. I've seen um, Robin Williams by the side of my bed. I have a question about this because you are not the only medium that I've spoken to who has, who mentions Robin Williams. I think I know three people that said, for whatever reason, he seems to be communicating with people. Oh my goodness. I, oh, that makes it feel better because I thought people wouldn't believe me because honestly, I just had a bit of a, you know, to do with a partner and I thought, well, sod you, I'm upset now. I'm going to turn over this way and ignore you and go to sleep. Well, I weren't asleep. And I was saying, I was thinking, I was, you know, um, um, you know, we do love each other, but we'd had a big luck partners do sometimes. And I turned over and thought, saw you. And then all of a sudden the room kind of shifted. And the lights were out, so we were in bed. The room kind of shifted. And I looked, and there he was, Robin Williams, knelt by my bed, smiling beautifully. And he was all lit up in a white suit and, and a, like a film of glow around him of light. And he looked lovely. He looked so happy. And I, I said, oh, in my mind, I said to him, oh, you're going to make me cry even more now. And I cried more. So I know I was awake because I cried because yeah. that was beautiful. And I thought, why has he come to see me? <laughs> a I little old my stupid sense of humour that he likes. <laughs> he must have... He must sort of be a special kind of a, a soul because I've not, you are not the only person I've heard this from. Um, and I know it sounds, it sounds so crazy, but you know, at this point I talk to dead people, so I don't rule anything out. I've always yeah. been in fact, a little, not skeptical, but just because I don't believe anything until I see it myself. So I have more trouble, even though I believe you and I believe other people that I know, I have more trouble with the physical stuff, like the trumpet and that I I don't, and it's not that I don't believe it. It's just that I haven't experienced it. So it's harder for me to accept it. And, oh, um, it's just, just, it's I something to, else. Yeah. And again, I, but it's not that I don't believe people or you. It's just that I am still a skeptic at heart where I do mediumship. I have a mediumship reading right after this. And I myself will go, I'm always questioning because I'm just somebody that needs to see it for myself to believe it. I only even believe I can talk to dead people because I've done so many readings now and it's proof and I've proven it to myself that, okay, this is real, but it's, it's incredible to expand that like, okay, well, if this is true, why can't that be true? So I'm a lot more open-minded now about things like that, that seem really crazy. Um, But really I'm like, why is it so far-fetched when I've experienced this, when people have near-death experiences and that sort of thing, you know, it's. I've heard that uh, he's an American guy. I can't think of his name now, but he was a neurological surgeon or something. Uh, Eben Alexander, probably. Oh, that is the most beautiful near-death experience I've ever heard. I Mine too. I love his book, um, Proof of Heaven. 
is the name of his book, if it's the same person we're speaking of. Oh, it's him, yes. Yeah, and it's a beautiful, I recommend that book as one of the best written near-death experience books. Um, And so I wanted to ask you too, again, would Jonathan like to speak today? If not, no pressure at all. I don't like putting anybody on the spot. I'm I'm sure he can. You know, I haven't got my phone in here, so if I could just fetch my phone. Absolutely, Um, take your, we can. Before we start, I'll show you a picture of him. Yeah, he is. Oh, I would love. Now, this is wonderful because you are an artist, a spiritual artist, and I love this. How did you see him in order to draw that? Do you see it in your mind? Did you see it in a dream? How did you know what he looked like? I, I didn't draw it. My friend Frances did. Oh, you described to her you in described our circle it. years ago. She's passed on now, but he said, could you draw me? And she said, well, let describe yourself to me. And that's him. My daughter always said, that's how he looks, mum. Even when she was little, she said, there's, you know, that's him. And it's funny how she knows that that is him. That is so Um, beautiful. That's a wonderful painting. It is. She's a very, very talented. His bow and his, uh, his bow in the pear and his bow at the front is so authentic looking. I know he stays with me there you know I don't even want to put him up there because I want him there at eye level where so I can you can see him. him yeah that's so lovely yes. this is where I gave Elaine some time to go into trance and for Jonathan to come through so without further ado here is Jonathan speaking through Elaine hello my dear hello Jonathan it is nice to be with you It is so nice to see you, too. Yes, I thank you for doing this for me. It is an absolute honor and a pleasure. You are most welcome. So if you wish to ask me anything, I am here to help you. Thank you so much. Jonathan, is there anything that you want the collective to know today? Yes, there is that our world is real, as you know. And for those that don't believe, we are not going to force you to against your will. But you see, with the vastness of the universe and the beauty of it, the endlessness, the eternal of it, and the beauty of the world and the magnificence that is in your world, the miracle of life, how could there not be anything after that? What would be the purpose of life? What would be the purpose of life if there was nothing after this? What would it all be for? If physical death was just ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and and you did not any longer exist in any way, then what would this earth be for? What would the plan be for? And for instance, if you go to a medium, they may tell you future things that are going to happen. Your soul had pre-planned it all. Deja vu, that is another thing. A memory of what you had planned as a soul previous to incarnating in this world. So you see, our existence is absolutely and indelibly real. There are too many uh, non-coincidences and there are only synchronicities in life. Because everything is all part of the greater picture of the greater puzzle that is always going to be left unfinished because the human has not finished completing it. There is always something new to learn about the universe, about the heavens, about your world. But you see, when your loved ones pass to the spirit world, they do not die. They die physically. The physical body is cast aside and they are released like a butterfly out of a cocoon. So death is actually freedom. It is exhilarating. It is not to say that we want you all to go away and and, and do away with yourselves. No, live your life because life is also exhilarating. It is also a discovery, an adventure. And you see your soul knows it all, but what it is doing is reliving it. It is having an adventure, rediscovering it. So you are a soul having a human experience. And that is what I wanted to get to you here today to tell you that whatever you say, whatever you doubt, there is no doubt that our world exists and uh, we all love you. You may see it as a fairy tale, or a fantasism. But you see, where would people get the information from if they weren't, if they were true? 
where would they get it from? You have a consciousness within, and that consciousness is limitless. If you look at all of the intelligent people in the world, the scientists, the artists, the doctors, everything, where do they get it from? Where do they get the knowledge from? You may say, well, they learn it from another. But where did the other get it from? Where did the other before that get it from? And, and these painters and uh, creators, they didn't have any teaching. Where did they get it from? Their consciousness, which is limitless. And sometimes the guides will help them along with that. Children do not lie about seeing spirit. So don't call them foolish because they are telling you the truth. It is real. They will not lie to you about it. They know our world because they have not long been away from it. They have come into your ego-based conditioned world, but therefore, if you look past the ego side of it, you'll see that life is a miracle and everything else is a miracle on your earth because it all coincides with one another. It all connects in every way. There is not anything that doesn't. Everything, every single plant, tree, person, mammal, insect, above in the, the skies, below your feet, is all in action, all supporting. And without it, we couldn't possibly exist. So it is all a miracle. And when you see and you stare physical death in the face, you have no need to fear. Because once you leave that body of yours, you will be set free and you will go home to a beautiful place you call heaven. Well, I guess it could be called heaven because it is absolutely gloriously beautiful, full of light, full of beauty, full of things that you don't even see in your world. So listen to the near-death experiences, because they are not lying to you. You couldn't possibly make up something so beautiful as that. You would have to spend weeks rehearsing it, and I'm sure that they wouldn't want to do that. Take their stories in, because they're true stories, they're real. It's what's happened to them after they have physically died and they are brain dead. Yet they are brought back to life and, and here to tell you the story, to tell you the whole happening of what happens to you after you physically die. So death is just a metaphor, you see. It's a casting off of the physical, the temple that you dwell in. And everything is progression. You don't just come here to live one life. You could not possibly learn everything about love in one lifetime. You couldn't. So you have more than one existence, which is called reincarnation. And each lifetime, you overcome fears, you learn about love in physical form, and you have this human experience. And sometimes, if you do not overcome your fears, you may bring them back into this life with you in similar form to be overcome. So each time you peel away the layers of life, the layers of your experiences. And as you let them go, so shall you become greater. As you learn to love yourself as well as others, so shall you become expansive. So attune yourself to your higher self, your intuitiveness, trusting it. Because it is an old soul that sits inside of you that knows, knows your journey, because he planned it. I would say, be true to yourself. Discover our world, do it in the right way, do it in the light and glorious way. Don't misuse it, use it wisely, use it beautifully. Use it to help others, but also use it to help your soul to grow. And when you go back home again, you will say, well, yes, there is a spirit world because you will be absolutely excited to let others know that are here on the earth. We usually find that when there is a spirit that hasn't believed 
in the physical world, they immediately want to get in touch through these mediums and let their family know that there is a spiritual world and we are sorry that we doubted you. So I would say don't leave it until then, discover it. Discover that miracles can happen, anything can happen. When you go to sleep at night, you dream, you may dream of your loved ones. It's real, you have seen them, you have touched them. So that shows you it's not just a dream, is it? You are getting out of your body there and your consciousness is visiting in the astral. Your loved ones have come down from the heavens, come to see you. It's real. None of it is fake or it's real. You can question it all that you like, but it is real still. And I'm sure this lovely lady here will let you know of her experiences to let you know that it is real. She will not tell you any lies, it's all real. And we will keep on showing it to you until you understand it. But we don't want to force anyone against their will. We are letting you know that nothing is going to change that. The fact that it is, heaven is in existence, the afterlife. And we are in communication with you because we want to be. I would say that certain religions would say, well, you're not allowed to get in touch with that because, you know, they are evil. But there are the lower realms of spirit. Yes, I'm not going to lie to you, there are. But there are also loving spirits from the higher heavens that come to visit you because they love you. And they want to, you to be knowing that they are absolutely fine in spirit. Uh, they are not evil. And if you weren't afraid of them in the life and you love them, why would you not love them after they had gone? They are coming back to let you know that they love you. And that they haven't died, they've just passed to another realm that doesn't require a physical being. And it is a happy place where they are well rested. So you see, it's not evil. Oh, yes, I would say the ones that are in the lower realms, they do keep reincarnating until they eventually raise their soul enough to come to the light. But they are never not loved. Because we see things from every side. And we know that if you don't believe, we're not going to stop loving you because of it. So look into it. Look into meeting your true self. Even if you don't get involved with the spiritual side of things for doing it yourself, you don't have to. What you are doing is you are discovering you. You are meeting you. And you will appreciate life much more. Discover your higher self. Trust in it. Trust in the universe because it is connected to all that is. And it is connected to you and you are connected to it. Once you discover yourself, the world is going to be your oyster and you shall become greater and stronger and more determined in life and successful. So stop doubting yourselves. Those of you that have already got an ability and that you are using it, trust in it. Trust in yourself and trust in that. The human being is never going to be perfection. But we see it as that because there is a glorious soul sitting inside of it. You are just living in an ego world. When you come to our world, there is no ego. It doesn't exist. It dies with your physical. Because you are entering into a glorious place that does not require any of that humanness. But we are here to love you and support you whilst your journey is going on. That your soul, by the way, chose. You would probably say to me, why would I choose such an awkward existence? Or why would that person choose such a terrible existence? There's a reason for everything. And I'm not going to go into it because you would say, well, why not? 
I would be here all night. You say, well, is it karma, Jonathan? Well, you see, you could call it karma, but I would say that the soul wishes to experience every single emotion. They may turn it back to front and say, well, I had a happy life in that life. Now I want to experience every single emotion in this life that's maybe not so good, so I've had both sides of the story, so then I can become more empathic in each lifetime, you see. If you were talking to a person and saying to them, that they weren't very well, perhaps, or they had depression, and you would say, well, I know how you feel. You wouldn't. You wouldn't know how they felt until you had perhaps experienced something like that yourself. You couldn't even begin to know. You could only surmise. But if you were to experience it for yourself, then you would know what that person was going through, because something of a similarity may have caused you to feel that way, perhaps. It's not that we would want you to, but the soul wishes to express and go through every emotion. And it's all to do with love, you see. Negative and positive are always going to run alongside each other in your world. That's how it works. Progression, too, you see. People get impatient with progression. They want everything to stay the same. Well, it won't. It is going to progress in your world as it does in ours, but differently. So that is my advice to you today. Believe in yourself. Look further into who you are. You are unique. You are special. You are a soul in a human being. That's what you are. That is what makes your essence of who you are. You are the essence. The soul is the essence of you. And before you come here, you choose your family, your friends, your parents, and they choose you because they are part of your journey, you are part of theirs. Each soul will help one another on each other's journey because you're all connected, you're all as one. Even though you behave, behave separately or you may not have all of the life's journey together, you're still part of it. And if they are to go in a different direction and you go in a different direction, you've done your bit with them. You have a different path to them because your soul chose it. So I hope that helps you, my dear. That was wonderful, beautiful. Jonathan, thank you for your energy, for your insight, for your wisdom. And thank you, Elaine, for allowing Jonathan to use your body as a vessel to relay this information to us all. That really resonated. You are very welcome, my dear. I, I will bring Elaine back now, but thank you once again. And, Wonderful. Uh, of course, you can cut the bit out of waiting for her to come back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, thank you. God bless you. Bless you. Welcome back, Elaine. Yeah. Thank you so much for allowing us to witness the way that you and Jonathan work together. How do you feel? Yeah, I feel all right. Yeah. Good. That was beautiful, validating. It really just uh, affirmed everything, I believe. And I hope that it resonated with everyone else. I can only imagine it will. Um, and I just want to thank you so much for being here today. Is there anything that you, Elaine, would like to leave us with in terms of what do you want people to know? Well, like Jonathan said, I just want people to know it's all real. And, um, you know, if they want a reading with me, I have a website, elainethorpe.com. Um, I have a YouTube channel under Elaine Thorpe if they wanted to watch other videos about my guide's teachings, you know. 
and uh, of course the, the new TikTok channel. I'm not really used to it. My family got me into that, so I'll just leave them to that side of it. And there's my art, you know, that's on the website, elainethorpe.com. If you want to take a look at what I do, I do personal art and on request. In many ways, I, you know, Spirit helped me to, to bring something in a, of a message forth in the art. So that, you know, that's just a, a bit about what I do. And I thank you for having me on. It's been a pleasure. You're a, a lovely lady. I feel relaxed and happy with being here with you. So... Likewise, Elaine, thank you so much. It means the world that you showed up today. I look forward to speaking with you soon. And I recommend that whoever's interested, go to her website. She's very affordable too. So uh, recommending her and bless you, Elaine. You are a gift to this world. Thank you for coming out of your shell to share it with, to share that gift with the rest of us. Thanks, Emily, and, uh, you know, good luck with your journey too. Thank you, love.